G'day everyone, welcome back to the vlog. In this video, we're gonna teach you how to actually get your crickets breeding and a few little tips and tricks that you can use to get them breeding. Uh, this is gonna be vlog number 22, so that's pretty cool as well. All right, let's get into it. So I get a lot of people ask me how to get my crickets breeding or how do I actually breed, breed my crickets or how I get them to actually lay eggs. Um, so there's a couple of situations that you guys need to be aware of. The first one is when you buy your crickets. Um, normally most people buy their crickets from like a pet store and they start breeding them. There's no actually way of telling how old the crickets are. So if the crickets are large, which is the size um, they need to be for breeding, um, there's three sizes that they can actually be within that large. So they can be large enough and they look big enough that they're actually classified as an adult but they're not old enough to start breeding yet. The next stage is they're big enough to start breeding um, so they will start breeding. And the third one is they're actually big enough to breed but they're too old to breed anymore and they've actually ran out of eggs. So they're the three situations that you need to be aware of. Um, and to give you a little example, these guys are about eight months old. And you can see there's a few up the back there. Now there's not many in this container because it's so old. But these guys are old enough to breed. They're big enough to breed. They're making noise, so they're looking to mate. But you can see that there's hardly any holes inside this breeding soil. So most of the females in this bin have ran out of eggs. The next one would be in here. So these guys, Nah, they're too small. This bin up here. So we've just actually put the breeding soil in there, but once again, you can't see. There's uh, a lot of holes, there's hardly any holes. There's maybe one there, two there. But these guys are big enough to breed, but they're actually not making a lot of noise. So if they're making noise, that's a real positive size sign, and also the size is a real positive sign. So they have to be big enough and they have to be making noise to be able to actually start breeding. Then if I actually go to one of our breeding tubs, now these guys are here, are the perfect size, they're making noise, and also I've been a little bit noisy, so there's not many on here, but you can see how there's plenty of holes, and there's a few on there now actually breeding. So, they are the three different sizes. So, when you buy crickets from the shop, just be aware that the crickets might not be old enough. So, if they're not old enough, they won't be making any noise. And then if they're too old, and businesses do actually sell their old crickets, you won't actually get a lot of eggs out of them anyway. So, just be aware, if you do have crickets breeding and you don't get a lot of eggs, they could be too old, or just give it some time and wait for them to start making noise and for them to be the right size. Now, what is that right size? It's actually about seven weeks old and they'll be maybe two centimeters long. Two to 2.5 in size. Hey, just quickly before we go any further with the breeding, um, it's a different day, but all the crickets were actually hiding away so we couldn't actually see them. And I figured I'd come back another morning to actually show you what they do look like when they are breeding. Um, so I'll just flip the camera around right now. Okay, so the next thing you guys need to consider is heat. Heat is really important um, for adult crickets and humidity is very important for pinheads. So crickets of this size down there. Humidity is really important for this, these guys and I've actually got a video on the channel which uh, 
gives a little bit more detail around why humidity is important and it's about how to keep your pinheads alive. But for adults, they don't necessarily need a lot of humidity, they just need heat. And that heat is about 28 degrees and it can be anywhere between 28 and 35. We've ran the container at 35 degrees and the benefit of actually running the container at a hotter temperature is the crickets are more active and they're more likely to go and lay eggs and eat more food. They'll grow quicker, they'll also produce more eggs faster because it's in a better environment but you need to weigh up the cost of that as well because the hotter you heat the container then there is going to be an extra cost for power bill so just be aware of that. Okay, so the next thing is food. Now food isn't a huge factor, but obviously if the crickets are not eating well, then they won't be very active because they won't have enough energy to be able to actually produce eggs. So just finding something that gives them a lot of energy. So we use oats, wheat and barley for our mix and then also the oranges and with the water. So it's not a huge factor, but it is something that you need to consider. So just get your food right in the container or in your bins as well. All right, and another thing that you guys need to be aware of is the coconut husk, or the breeding soil that we call it. So we use coconut husk, and the reason why we use this is because it soaks up moisture really, really easily, and it stays damp for a very long time, so it actually holds their moisture. Now, that's what it looks like when it's wet, and this is a fresh bin, so over the next few days, you'll see more pinheads starting to come here. But I'll take you over to the other container just to show you guys what it looks like. Now, coconut husk. coconut husk is very dry, and this is just one of our bins of coconut husk. And you can see there's a little bit of wet in there already because this is our older stuff that we use, and it's already been broken up and used a couple times. And in here, I'll show you what it actually looks like when it's fresh. So we just have bins of coconut husk just sitting here, and it comes in these massive square blocks. They're actually quite heavy. I'm not even sure if I'm going to be able to get it out one-handed. So, yeah, we've got two blocks just in here and that can fill up one of those bins that you just saw, just one of those cubes alone. So, and then this is actually the coconut husk that we're going to be using tomorrow when we change the breeding soils. So you can already see this is nice and damp. You don't need to have it wet already. This is just left over from yesterday. So, there you go. Coconut husk. Very effective. Okay, so that is everything for actually getting your crickets to breed. Um, just take into consideration the stuff that I said at the start of the video if you're just starting out about how old your crickets are because companies, when you do buy the crickets, they will either be at the end of their life stage or they're even at the start of their life um, or start of their breeding life. So just take that stuff into consideration. Um, as you go on, as you keep farming crickets, it will get easier and easier and it will be a lot more consistent. So. In summary, just uh, make sure that the crickets have plenty of food and water so they're happy and have heaps of energy, and also the heat and the humidity. The humidity is not super important for adults, but it is important for pinheads and their growth. So make sure you have the right temperature. The other thing is making sure that the coconut husk is nice and damp, so it has to be wet for the crickets to be able to lay in, because if the eggs dry out, then you'll be in big trouble later on, and you won't actually be able to produce any pinheads. So. Keep that stuff into consideration and we'll see you next time. If you do have any questions, do send them through. Um, my old man's just walked in. Say good day. G'day. <laughs> and yeah, we'll see you next time on the video. Bye.